Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, thinkers, drinkers, and ship sinkers, welcome along to the Joe Spivey YouTube channel, where we discuss books and little else. And of course, as ever, folks, I'm going to <laughs> I'm going to have to issue my most uh, red-faced and desperate apologies. It has been uh, no small matter of five days since I was last here on YouTube, uh, and that is because I have been a frightfully naughty boy, and I have been cavorting about the town like the bacchanalian uh, nonsense spouter that I am. Um, it was on Saturday that Grand Vice Rice Bybee had his big old visit to um, uh, the the quaint city of Hull, and um, yeah, we, we, we went round and uh, emptied goblets of golden lager beer, um, and I was, as, as I say, I, I was sort of... Um, zealously enjoying the constant now that's what i refer to it when 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 you're when you're downing alcohol and things are getting better and better and better and better and better it's the constant now you do not care about the next 25 days the next 25 hours the next 25 minutes heaven forbid it's all a kind of uh, temporal microcosm it's all about the now and the here and the present and um yeah four pints turned into eight pints um, which meant that I, I went from a, a kind of bipedal hominid to some kind of anguilliform sea dweller before long. I was I was I was good for nothing, folks. Basic acts like you know walking along the promenade and scaling a fence and opening a bin and opening a door and finding one's key in one's pocket becomes uh, a, a physical impossibility. So yeah, uh, I, I have been. Uh, um, wallowing in my own stinking pit, my own troll's den over the last few days, which is why I haven't been on on, uh, on YouTube, which is a shame because I have a great, as I'm sure the title denotes, I have a great deal of books uh, uh, to show you all today uh, that you can feast your eyes upon. Uh, second of all, there has been uh, not really, shall we say, booktube drama, but 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 I have been involved in uh, the comment sections and um, of, of other videos, um, and it, it wasn't really slime throwing. It was more of a robust exchange of staunch viewpoints. I think we shall say um, over on uh, Cameron's channel at the Slaggy Book Club. Let that one settle in. Um, oh, yeah, over on Cameron's channel at the Slaggy Book Club, um, she recently did a video where she recommended literary fiction to. Um, genre fiction buffs and um, within two or three minutes I saw some of the hallmarks of genre book snobbery that is exercised by very many people who only read literary fiction um, and so I so I took to the comment section and tried to first of all hoist them or her and then some of her adherents in the comments hoist them by their own petard by uh, 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 brushing over literary fiction as something which is pseudo profound and brooding and an act of creative onanism. I tried to, in, in a sense, I tried to um, thoughtlessly insult an entire genre just in the way that they had done and see how angry they would get. And they got, they got jolly angry folks. Um, uh, I, I, and and uh, Cameron seems to think that genre fiction is um, robotically formulaic and Essentially, from the words she was using, uh, it, it seems as if all genre fiction writers, so that's Sir Arthur Conan Doyle, that's John Le Carre, that's Agatha Christie, that's uh, very, 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 very many writers who um, have achieved, you know, great, great uh, sort of, you know, canonical posterity um, are, are, are essentially just piling bricks on top of one another, which is absurd and insulting and wrongful. Um, and I wouldn't mind that being said if, if, if indeed, um, you know, great readers told me that, such as, you know, our booktube patron and pariah Steve Donahue, who has read everything once and twice and thrice, or um, Samuel Taylor Coleridge, of whom it was said he was the last person to have consumed everything which was in print, or Harold Bloom, or James Wood, or uh, Virginia Woolf, or George Eliot, or people that have stuck by these things and, and, and really have absorbed the canon, but... 30 seconds after insulting genre fiction, Cameron decided to let us all know that she isn't, she does, she reads absolutely no, no genre fiction whatsoever. Um, so in the same way that I can't really comment on astrophysics or on optometry or on the material components of whale blubber or on the demographic breakdown in the South Sudan, um, whereof we do not know, thereof we must be, if not silent, but, 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 um, shall we say, humbly quiet. Um, so yes, I, I, I had a little go in the comments and I don't want to demote this to, 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 
child's play, but my comment did get the most likes. So, uh, and a few other people uh, referenced some condescending language in there. So yes, it was it was nice to have, a, as I say, have a have a robust exchange of views in those comments. I could tell that we were about five or ten minutes away from uh, delving into the ad hominem, um, and and I don't want to do that. So, um, but I do indeed. After all of that, after that huge throat clearing once more, I do have. Uh, a great many books to show you because Stephen brought along with his uh, satirical wit, along with his uh, indomitable chin that rests on, on the bottom of his, face, of his face, he did bring a great big largesse of books uh, uh, for me and me alone almost. So, um, yeah, I've got some, got some good things to show you. First of all, we've got some big ones here today, folks. Some, some, uh, some absolute elephantine collections. We've got um, Hitler by Ian Kershaw. This is the second of his, I think his, his two volume biography of, 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 um, of the horrendous dictator. Um, and this is the later years. This is 1936 to 1945, subtitled Nemesis. Um, and w what can we say about Adolf Hitler? He was ostensibly a Philip for um, working class frailties and working class admirations, for, for a working class that, that felt left behind by years and years and generations and generations of, um, you know, uh, bureaucratic malpractice, shall we say. He was a very, very um, eloquent and uh, a persuasive and charismatic speaker in the beer halls. Um, he was hoisted up as somebody and, and, and furthered by um, establishment right-wing thinkers who thought that they might be able to might be able to manipulate him, but but they were they were actually radically underestimating him. He demonised um, ev almost every single foreigner that dared to enter Germany, especially of course the Jewish people, which led to horrendous six million strong pogroms years and years later. Um, and if at all possible, he would have liked to have. Um, lowered every single human being's democratic rights within Germany and looked upon elections as just, uh, you know, sort of fanciful child's play. Um, and I hope that those six or seven bullet points uh, pointed you towards a commonality of a, a living, breathing demagogue um, that is, you know, poisoning our midst every single day. Um, and so, yes, th that was obviously a very obvious reference to um, Donald J. Trump, um, because, of course, it, it is seen nowadays that, that pointing out the obvious, um, you know, reporting objective fact that Donald Trump fails to commit to a peaceful transfer of power and is um, a, an impeached insurrectionist, and um, is, I believe, a convicted felon and an adjudicated rapist and has seven or eight, you know, other trials that, that, that could well be uh, tr tried in the next few, few months and years. Um, that is not to... The right wing suppose that that is just us um, either carrying favour with foreign forces or is a way of, you know, uh, uh, you know, shoving out more divisive rhetoric, which when it is not. Um, I'm almost quoting Sam Harris when I say that um, it is not absolute madness to point out that Donald Trump is, by several orders of magnitude, the worst politician that has ever, you know, metabolised gluten, as I like to say, who has ever swilled Diet Coke. Um, and yeah, <laughs> so, so let us say that I'm looking forward to reading I, I'm actually looking forward to reading. Stephen has promised me that there is um, that, that the prior volume is um, at the same second hand bookstore where he purchased this from, um, and, and he promises me that he will. I don't think he'll send a copy out, but the next time we commune for more bacchanalian exploits, I'm sure that um, I'm sure that I'll be handed the, the, the prior volume. Very very interested in in learning just how it was that Hitler rose to power. You do bits and bobs of it in primary and secondary school uh, in this country, and I've read Rise and Fall of the Third Reich, but I think, just as a refresher, as things come to a great, um, a great fascistic zenith in uh, November in the United States, it would be nice to, to, to redo this. And I've already read the first chapter. I read that on Saturday whilst watching bits and bobs of rugby and, and was startled by Kershaw's um, it's a sort of straight-laced eloquence. Um, I myself, um, yet I, I'm not sufficiently mature to practice that straight-laced eloquence. I either just, you know, give up a pyrotechnic show or I don't bother at all. Um, I, I think that I'm far, far cleverer than I actually am, whereas Kershaw is much more assured and much more sober in his uh, dealings. So yeah, that was that, a jolly good opening chapter and I'm sure I'm going to enjoy the lot of it. This is in excess of a thousand pages, I do believe. So that's 36 to 45, Nemesis, and it's just titled, of course, Hitler. There he is, staring out of a train. Uh, humorlessly, I'm sure you'll agree, he looks despondent, considering, which is which is bizarre, given that he has control over hundreds of millions of people at the time. Uh, next up we have, this is not something that will be staying in my 
not not something that will be staying in my collection for very long. This was bought by Stephen, and I in the ensuing melee, um, in the in the in the um, the goblet emptying morass that that, that became of Saturday evening, uh, I wasn't able to hand it back to him. Um, but, but we have British infantry regiment, 1660 to 1914. Of course, you can guarantee that uh, somebody who would walk into a shop and buy this has never had connubial contact with a female uh, and ought to be bullied around every corner. Um, but this is, yeah, this is essentially just stuff showing British infantry red. I'm going to say it in a childishly irreverent way. Ooh, look at all those toy soldiers with all of their fancy colours and all of their... Um, all of their swords. So yes, that's um, British Infantry Regiment, 1660 to 1914. Of course, the the I suppose the the 1914 aspect will be the most interesting for me because um, the British Expeditionary Force was the first fully literate army. That's my that's my one great fact. Um, next up, we have a, a triad of P.G. Woodhouse. You know that I I can't get enough of the um, the kind of artful frivolity that Woodhouse revels in. This is um, Leave It to P Smith, or, or Leave It to Smith, as I suppose it's uh, uh, properly pronounced. And um, yeah, this is already falling apart, or one of them at least is, is, is falling apart. These, um, I think this particular copy was published in the 70s, was it? Da -da -da. Reprinted 1954, 66, 75 and 79. So yeah, the, these are best part 50 years old, these copies, and, and Woodhouse's works are themselves a century old now as well. So they've presumably just come out of copyright. Um, yeah, so this is uh, Leave It to Smith, and uh, let's have a look at the blurb. On the run from the fish trade, the estimable Smith is mistakenly invited to Blanding's Castle by Lord Emsworth, and Lady Constance's diamond necklace pays the penalty. And then we've got Evelyn War, who um, Evelyn War, who, who who provides some criticism. I can't remember who it was, but but I think some person said to criticise Woodhouse is to um, what was it? Attack a souffle with a hammer, or attack a souffle with a chainsaw, or something, which is a perfect way of. Um, uh, a perfect way of rendering just what it's like to read uh, a Woodhouse novel. Uh, next up we have Galahad at Blandings. Uh, this is even thinner. Uh, a major mix-up at Blandings Castle in which Galley introduces yet another imposter to Lord Emsworth residence and the Empress of Blandings gets sloshed in her sty. Now I think Joseph Spivey could be said to have been sloshed in his sty over the past few days so that'll ring true as well but but I don't know who it is that does the illustrations on the front. Um, Ionicus the back tells me but they are Look at that. That is that is colourful um, and everybody manages to be sort of pudgy and uh, 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 somehow stupid as well. There, there, there isn't one conscientious person on the front there, but that's Galahad at Blandings. And then um, I found this myself. This is Life at Blandings. This is this is jolly large, as I'm sure you'll agree. Uh, and this has got three in there. We've got Something Fresh, which runs from page one to 245. Summer Lightning, which runs from 245 to 533. And then Heavy Weather After that and um, uh, the cover uh, who's done the cover illustration here but that that's you know similarly spectacular as I'm sure you'll agree a little more like um, a Richard Burton film than, than the previous illustrations but but pretty good nonetheless Lord knows where it is that I'm going to squeeze this because as I say it's an absolute butcherous wob uh, wad rather um, so I'll get to it at some point. Been well read though. It's uh, it's it's the spine is is nicely cracked. So uh, somebody has loved this as much as I do. Uh, impo imposters abound in the latter day Eden that is Blanding's Castle. So that's um, yeah, that, that's my trifecta of Woodhouse. Next up we have uh, a trifecta of Evelyn War. Um, this is the copy. This I knew there was one copy that was falling to bits. You can see there. There's already something of a um, something of a uh, vaginal damage as I say, that's been done to this copy. That's uh, Men at Arms, um, author of Brideshead Revisited. Um, and let's have a look at the blurb. Um, Guy Crouchback, determined to get into the war, takes a commission in the Royal Corps of Halberdiers. His spirit's high, he sees all the trimmings, but none of the action. And his first campaign, an abortive affair on the West African coastline, ends with an escapade which seriously blots his halberdier copybook. Uh, and then we've got some praise from the New York Review of Books. And uh, Cyril Connolly said, unquestionably the finest novel to have come out of the war. So when, when indeed was this published? I can't quite remember when. Uh, so we've got da -da -da, Klein and Fall. Sorry, to talk amongst yourselves, folks, whilst the confused Joseph gets his ducks in a row. Uh, first published 1952. So was this, I, I do believe this was, this was, this will have been, yeah, of course it was after Brighton Rivers to Joe because it's, the praise for it is on the front, you idiot. Um, so yeah, another, another short copy of Evelyn Moore. Um, next up we have 
put out more flags. Um, what happened to the characters of Decline and Fall and Vile Bodies when war broke out? Put out more flags shows them adjusting to the changing social pattern of the times. Some of them play a valorous part, others, like the scapegrace Basil Seal, disclose their incorrigible habit of self-preservation in all circumstances. And again, a very, an orange copy, a copy orange by time, um, which is about 200 pages. So yeah, uh, War and Woodhouse are, um, I want to say cut of the same cloth, they've got that same bibbidi bobbidi English careless humour, um, but but there is there lurks a seriousness in every comma and every every um, subordinate clause. I do think um, so. That's yeah. That's that's put out more flags. I guess straight very 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 smudged uh, 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 front cover there. You've got a gentleman whose anatomy isn't entirely proportionate. We're supposed to believe that his foot is well oh, at least the size of a, of a large loaf of bread, and yet his head is the size of a tangerine. Um, yeah, I saw a little boy, Master Wayne, playing with a ruby the size of a tangerine. There we are. There's a there's a terrible Michael Caine impression for you all. But yes, uh, more Evil in War, I'm happy to receive. And this one I was most excited about. I found this again myself. Um, a Penguin modern classic, folks, of decline and fall. Um, sent down from Oxford in outrageous circumstances, Paul Pennyfeather is oddly unsurprised to find himself qualifying for the position of schoolmaster at Lenaba Castle. Lenaba Castle, that sounds Welsh. His colleagues are an assortment of misfits, rascals and fools, including Prendy and Captain Grimes, who is always in the soup or just plain drunk. What a, what a magnificent idiom for um, troublesome times that is, in the soup. Then Sports Day arrives and with it the delectable Margaret Bestie Chetwind, floating on a scented breeze. As the farce unfolds and the young run riot, no one is safe, least of all Paul. So there is, um, presumably, that's that's Mr. War there. Um, and his, I think his great nephew, or his, his, his great grandson, or his grandson, um, Alexander, who passed away, I think, about 12 months ago, um, was, was a leader of the... Um, Shakespeare author controversy. Uh, uh, he was he was a leading uh, Oxfordian, and um, so so I, I've been I've been again cavorting with the walls quite a lot recently. Um, and this was the, the book about which I got most excited. The book that that really did put bees in my bonnet. Um, even though I was probably overcharged for it. Um, and this was the first time that I've seen it. I've been looking for it for, for every time I've walked into a second-hand bookstop. This is a, a world classic. Oh, so it's an Oxford world classic, an old Oxford world classic of an unabridged. Boswell's Life of Johnson. You have, of course, be familiar with that if ever you have looked onto my channel page because years, almost 12 months ago now, in fact, almost precisely 12 months ago now when I was looking for a header or a cover photo, um, I wanted somebody intently reading in a classical style and I think that does it just perfectly. You can see there he is um, lardacious, but he is sort of encumbered with literary zeal. All he wants to do is, is interrogate that text there, Mr. Dr. Johnson. And um, so, yeah, I, I've already read bits and bobs of the introduction and bits and bobs of some of the, some of the, uh, Boswell's, um, sort of prolegomena, a little bit of a, a little bit of an introduction as to what's going on. And, um, yeah, I can't, can't wait for this. I've already read an abridged version, which was one fifth of the size. I think I, mine was about 200 pages, but this runs to 11 or 1200. It's, it's, it's much like a, a King James folks with the, 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 um, in every sense, the, the, the pages are very, very thin indeed, but but this has just everything, everything that I want out of it. But it is large, it, it, it invites, you know, meditative responses. Um, it's it's written in a, um, a kind of uh, a, a, a magniloquently archaic style, um, so it doesn't sound like Johnson is just, you know, um, filling the page with with just whatever it is that the first thing that comes into his head you you really do feel as if you're you're getting um you're getting some uh you know tirelessly composed prose which is just what we should be reading for folks do not settle for um secondary or tertiary quality only settle for the best um so yes this is this, this is going to feature in my reading at some point it's it's actually really light and really small considering how um, considering how thick it is and how much text is involved um so yeah i know that johnson was um i think behind gore vidal probably the um the most famous man of letters never to have attended a university i know he attended but i, I don't think he matriculated for those of you playing joe by the verbal bingo matriculated is worth half a dozen points this morning um i, I don't ever i think finance got in the way um, and along with David Irving and others, um, they just couldn't afford to finish it. Um, so, so I, I do indeed have some some weird historical brothers in that regard, um, and I'm sure one day I will be 
one of those three or four people who gained prominence without having letters after my name, which would be nice, wouldn't it? Um, so yes, that's that's Boswell's Life of Johnson. And then um, a very, very strange triplet at the last. We have The Crossing of the Antarctica with, uh, this is, I think, by Vivian Fuchs and Edmund Hillary. Edmund Hillary, of course, um, the, the most famous man ever to have crossed the Arctic uh, with an underbite. Um, so we have a little bit of an expedition there going over a, a crevice or a crack. Um, goodness knows what lies beneath. Um, but yeah, a story of courage and enterprise, of endurance and cheerfulness. This was really piled onto the pile, uh, onto the top of the pile. Um, it wasn't something I chose. It came in Stephen's bag before I before I uttered a syllable to him. So um, yeah, I'm not sure what it was that I what it is that I'll get from this, but but I, I'll try it at some point. I don't doubt. Um, but it, it did remind me or, that the, uh, talking about this book reminds me that um, it is positively uh, uh, ridiculous in the United Kingdom at the moment. It is barely over 10 degrees and we have been deluged with some of the Lord's uh, 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 you know, wet splendour. Um, some, of the, some, of the, some of the worst rain that I've ever seen. Uh, my mum left this morning like Mr Amundsen. You really would have thought that she was going out for a small while and would be back soon or whatever the phrase is. You really thought that, that, that she might never return, um, but, but hopefully she will. Uh, and then last but not least, we have um, uh, uh, a modern and an original Bradshaw's handbook, a Bradshaw's guide. Now, for those of you sort of you 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 um you you burger munching ignoramuses in uh, the United States of America or indeed anybody that isn't a plum throated Briton um, may not know just what a Bradshaw's guide is. This is from August eighteen eighty seven. Uh, and this is a railway guide. So so any of you uh, that there is a um, one of the few conser past conservative politicians that isn't disgraced that wasn't caught you know engaging in pornographic matters in the pews of the House of Commons who didn't take money from former KGB agents who didn't, um, you know, undermine the rights of the working class, who didn't, um, you know, force very many millions into penury as a result of completely optional governmental choices. Um, uh, uh, Mr. Uh, what's his name? I'm forgetting his name all of a sudden. His name is, for goodness, for goodness sake, Joe, why is his name passing your mind? Before you went on that peroration, you knew it perfectly. Michael Portillo. Michael Portillo is one of those Conservative politicians who is no longer in office, but he's not disgraced, thank the Lord. And, um, he usually takes this Bradshaw's Guide when he's doing Great British Railway Journeys. So he'll be there in his um, in his sort of puce chinos and his mustard top with his uh, uh, with his Panama hat on and his little briefcase, walking in a sort of rectangular fashion. Very very walks in a very very straight way. Um, and yeah, he, he goes around Britain and uh, always uses the Bradshaw's Guide for information regarding the city he is visiting. Um, and it's, it's this is just a, a sort of collector's item. Um, Lord knows just how it is that one is meant to interpret it because just, what is that folks? That looks like something that Sam Bankman Freed or Elon Musk would, would, would desire. I mean, just how, uh, Scarborough to Filey to Bridlington to Beverly and Hull. So, that, so I have just randomly happened upon the route that I take very, very often. Um, but I mean, what, what are you supposed to get from that? I mean, I thought the tannoy was difficult to understand, but that is ridiculous. I mean, I can zoom in as much as I like, but that is frankly illegible. Um, so that's that's the original copy. That was a pound, and this is from 1887. So this is jolly old, so I should be more careful than I am being. And then this was uh, uh, something slightly more modern, which gives you information on, uh, amongst many other things, Wiltshire. Um, I haven't been able to found, find Hull yet because it's not under Kingston upon Hull, nor is it under Hull. Uh, we've got Buxton, we've got Bakewell, we've got Belper, um, which sounds like a, uh, a bully's insult rather than a town. Um, we've got Somerset, all that stuff. So, so it gives me information about Britain's towns and cities. Should I, should I ever want to, you know, elope with a maiden and, and build ourselves a new home? But I have gone on for long enough, folks. Um, this was, this was, of course, a, a big old book haul. Um, and yeah, I mean, what else have I got to say? We, we are, of course, in the early aspect of October now, um, which gives time for the, 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 the greatest booktube event, which is Victober. Um, and so I'll be reading bits and bobs from there. I'll be doing a review of Mark Twain's The Innocents Abroad. Um, I believe it should be, it, it, it's, I'm, you know, uh, its quality warrants um, a, a discreet apportionment of, of its own review, which will be nice. Uh, and then we'll go on to do whatever. I might do some trollop, I might do some uh, I was going to say Jane Austen then, but she's not a Victorian writer, is she? I might do some earlier. Oh, I'm going to read Bleak House. That's what I'm going to do. Um, and then we'll see. Um, but it's been 12 months since I went on BookTube. So at some point, I'm going to put out a call for questions to do another 
vainglorious Q&A, um, where you can ask me anything from, uh, 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 you know, the, the amount of fingers on, uh, the, the amount of toes on my feet to my thoughts on Alex Jones. That would be nice, wouldn't it? Um, so yes, I am, of course, going to cap this video at 25 minutes and um, go and take a nice old rest again. Thanks ever so much for watching, BookTube, and say goodbye.